Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, September 20th. This week's episode is sponsored by Recurrent Auto. More information during the break. A Tesla Mega Pack has caught fire at a giant battery project operated by PG&E in Monterey County, California. In April, PG&E launched the Elkhorn Battery Storage Facility, the largest Tesla Mega Pack project to date. The project consists of 256 Mega Pack battery units on 33 concrete slabs for a total capacity of 730 megawatt hours. Early this morning, a fire was reported at the facility, but fortunately, the safety systems worked and the fire didn't spread to the other packs. While battery fires are sometimes seen as inevitable with the sheer amount of energy and cells in such an installation, Tesla has put a lot of effort into making sure that they don't result in too much damage. And today, it worked. Tesla is creating a simulation of San Francisco in Unreal Engine to test its autopilot and full self-driving systems. Unreal Engine is largely used for creating video games, but Tesla staff have something different in mind. Just for testing of their vehicles, Tesla is making their own San Francisco environment as real to life as possible. The automaker even hired many environmental artists that worked on popular video games and is even looking to hire more. Tesla currently has several job listings for autopilot simulation, and it describes the role of autopilot rendering engineer. The simulation is becoming increasingly more realistic, and Elon Musk has pondered whether to make it public at some point, creating a video game based on the simulation. Elon Musk says that Tesla is borrowing the autopilot team for its Optimus Humanoid Robot project, which now has a deadline of the end of the month. Elon Musk has talked a lot about Tesla turning its fleet of 1 million vehicles into robo-taxis by the end of the year, but that goal has now changed to expanding its full self-driving beta program. And that's far from being able to perform a robo-taxi service, as most of us know. While many customers have been impatient with this goal, Musk has stated that the robot has become a priority. The deadline is at the end of the month for Optimus, and it's at Tesla's AI Day number 2, which the company is expected to unveil its first working prototype. Tesla is looking to significantly increase the number of testers on the full self-driving beta program. The initial ramp-up went up to 100,000, and that occurred some time ago, but now Elon Musk says that Tesla will add 60,000 more drivers. Whether or not someone is added will depend on their in-car safety score. And previously, Musk said that the new opening of drivers would extend to those with a score of 80 or higher. We're not certain if that's still the case today. Tesla seems to be quite confident with this new update. However, from our perspective, it should be noted that this titular driving system of full self-driving is not full self-driving. And if you do get access, please pay attention and stay safe, as is put in the requirements. This week's Quick Charge is sponsored by Recurrent Auto. Recurrent lets you check the battery before buying a used EV and monitor your battery's performance with monthly insights using its free battery reports for EV owners. And the new range score tool by Recurrent is like an odometer for EVs. It tells you at a glance how far a used EV can go compared to when it was new. It's especially helpful for people who are new to EVs and don't always know about the questions to ask about range and degradation. Surveys and early results have found that buyers pay more for cars with range scores, even if it's not in perfect condition. Anything is better than nothing. And substantially more for cars with really good range scores. For EV owners thinking about selling in the next 12 months, like those waiting on pre-orders for a hot new EV, Recurrent offers a free EV-specific valuation from Black Book that owners can use to sell their EVs at a premium when ready. It's only available in the U.S. and at the moment for most Tesla, Chevrolet, and Nissan EV models. You can head over to recurrentauto.com sell for more information and to get your free reports now. After ordering an enormous amount of electric vehicles from Tesla and then placing an order for even more from a variety of automakers, Hertz Rental is now placing an even greater massive EV order, this time to General Motors. In a joint press release today, Hertz and GM announced that they are going to deliver up to 175,000 electric vehicles from several GM brands over the next five years. They will first start with the Chevy Bolt EV and EUV, expected to be delivered in the first quarter of 23. After that, Hertz plans to buy EVs from all of GM's brands, even Brightdrop, which is the electric delivery van. 
If it follows the typical rental market and offerings, we expect the Equinox EV and Blazer EV to account for a large part of the order. Hertz is trying to build the largest electric vehicle fleet in North America, and they're already well on their way with tens of thousands of Tesla vehicles already delivered to their 500 locations. It is also renting a few more tens of thousands of Tesla vehicles to Uber drivers, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. With this kind of inventory, they might even be able to make a profit simply by reselling the cars that they have scooped up. The CEO of Ram Trucks believes that the company's electric pickup has what it takes to overthrow the competition. Ram Trucks is quickly falling behind as automakers like Ford and Rivian are already scaling up production of their highly anticipated pickups. The parent company to Ram, which is Stellantis, has been putting emphasis on many of the other brands, and in the USA a fair amount on the Jeep brand. But now the CEO of Ram has something to say. The CEO Mike Koval spoke to the Detroit Free Press, talking up the release of the brand's electric pickup and discussing Ram's feedback on towing, range, and charge time. He said that Ram is mindful that trucks still need to be trucks and do truck things. Ram still has a ways to go to catch up with Rivian, who has delivered close to 6,000 trucks last quarter, and Ford, who has sold around 6,800 since the release in April. And also, with Chevrolet touting their Silverado, Ram certainly won't be alone in their arrival. At some point, Tesla's Cybertruck and one million reservations will begin to flood the streets, but at the moment, speculation for its release are speculative, to say the least. Fisker has announced that they will partner with Wallbox to offer EV charging solutions to Fisker EV owners. Aside from the past difficulties from the early 2010s, Fisker has had some recent endeavors of ups and downs trying to get their EVs to market. In their second quarter earnings, the company reported over 56,000 reservation holders, up 6,000 from early June. But also in July, they asked their Ocean One reservation holders to shell out an extra $5,000 for a non-refundable deposit to be a pre-order, which was a sign that they needed some cash. But now Fisker and Wallbox are teaming up to offer EV chargers for the U.S., Canada, and European buyers. To make the deal even sweeter, they plan to offer home installation services to streamline the process. To me, that sounds pretty neat. Kia will start producing electric vehicles in the United States starting in 2024 in order to qualify for new EV tax credits from the Inflation Reduction Act. Over the last year, Kia and Hyundai have led other non-American companies in the U.S. sales of EVs, though the change in the EV credits have dealt a blow that might leave them in a slump for a little while. By the way, did you know that we have a guide on our website which lists all the tax credits that EVs qualify for in the U.S.? We keep it as up-to-date as we can so that you can cut the speculation and find out what EVs actually qualify for. Of course, there's an incentive for us to have you visit the site, but you knew that already. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Atgull says, Xpeng stole Tesla's ADAS code. Well, at goal, we can't say that with 100% confidence. It's true, last April, Tesla settled a lawsuit in which they accused a former employee, Guang Zhizhao, of downloading the autopilot source code to his personal device before leaving and selling it to Xpeng when he joined the company. The engineer did admit to downloading some of Tesla's autopilot source code, but he claims to have deleted it before leaving the automaker and never having transferred it to Xpeng. At any rate, legally, the matter has been settled and we know that there was a payment from Zhao to Tesla in that settlement. With that in mind, we can't say for legal certain that the employee gave it to Xpeng, or even if Xpeng profited from this alleged sale. There is one thing for certain. This lawsuit occurred in 2019, and whatever progress has been made by Tesla or Xpeng has been done on their own. I don't wish to excuse intellectual property theft. It is something that's often brought up when discussing Chinese companies. But this case has been settled, and we shouldn't pass judgment on the company until we have something solid to hang our hat on. I don't have my head in the sand about Chinese manufacturing or common company cultures. I found it quite fascinating and also a little concerning that China was only able to manufacture ballpoint pen rollers starting just five years ago. I'm getting a little bit off topic, but there you have it. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.